Hello, welcome to The Simsbury Review. I'm your host, Althea Graney. Simsbury has some of the prettiest vistas, walks, and bodies of water in Connecticut. Our backyards are visited by bear, coyote, possum, turkey, and a host of other critters. If you want organic food, it is grown in Simsbury, and our children have the opportunity to visit cows, pigs, chickens, and horses. How did Simsbury get to be so lucky? Was this planned? Who would think of creating such a haven for people, animals, and plants? Today our guests are members of the Simsbury Land Trust, and they can answer these questions, tell us about some fun events they're planning, and fill you on on their next projects, what their next projects are, and why they are important to you and the community. Frederick Feibel is a newly elected president of the Simsbury Land Trust, and Dick Davis is a supporting member on the Board of Trustees. Hi Fred and Dick, welcome to the show. Hi Althea, nice to be here with you. Well, let's start at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> what is the Land Trust? Well, the Land Trust it was started in 1976 mm -hmm. um, by a group of people interested in preserving land. But far more than that, it was preserving it for the future, getting people out on the property, managing it well, and, and having it available for our children in the future. Wow, okay. So that was the, that was the goal and the vision in 1976? 1976, and it's grown quite a bit since then. Yeah, okay. So, how much land has the Land Trust been able to preserve and protect? Well, <clears throat> well, as of uh, this year, we, we have um, protected a little over 1,000 acres, mm -hmm. um, all within the last 35 years. And um, uh, maybe I could take a moment to explain um, how that came about. Sure. And I just uh, give a brief overview. But, um, you know, we all know what a wonderful town uh, Simsbury is. Uh, a lot of us are surprised to learn how uniquely uh, diverse our environment is. Mm -hmm. um, even in Connecticut, which is a, a, just has a tremendous uh, amount of variety and diversity. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the map of, of Simsbury, which we have, have right here, this is the natural diversity resources. The colors show areas that are ecologically sensitive or, or important. Mm -hmm. um, you'll notice that, you, you ask the question, how, um, wh how do we have such a beautiful town? Right. And, and you kind of implied it was, it was because of the Simsbury Land Trust. <laughs> That's not, we That's have not a little, little help <laughs> we'll with the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, the obvious uh, features in town that, that mm -hmm. make it special are the, are the two trap rock ridges, okay. um, the Metacomet Ridge on the east side of town, the Bloomfield Line, and this uh, marvelous uh, collection of, of knolls that starts with Barn Door Hills, mm -hmm. uh, Saddle Ridge, down to uh, Sugarloaf, Hedgehog, Onion Mountain that uh, go along the west side of town. Mm -hmm. Then we have about eight miles of the Farmington River, right. which uh, goes from Avon all the way up to East Granby. The combination of the ridges and the um, river mm -hmm. uh, give us a, a fairly significant uh, differential in, tr in terrain elevation. Okay. Uh, from the river up to the top of the ridge is about 500, 550 feet, mm -hmm. which is, is a lot in a, in a small, small, small area. area. Anyone that looks up at the Hubline Tower and sees the, that precipice, right. I mean, that's, uh, that's your 500 feet <laughs> right, right there. Okay. Um, when rain falls, hits the, the ridges, it, it forms dozens and dozens of rivulets mm -hmm. that, that head down, downhill. Uh, they form a handful of major brooks that all feed into the Farmington River. The water collects uh, along the way in swamps, in bogs, in wet meadows, vernal pools, um, throughout the, the valley. Mm -hmm. uh, all all gravitating towards the eventually down down to the river. Yeah. Um, in addition, we also have um, fields. This is um, it's a river valley, so it's a very rich agricultural area. Uh, we have a number of farms that we've been able to protect. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, a half a dozen or so uh, natural meadows in the in the woods that that are also very important. So you take all of these different ingredients. Yep. Yeah which are all in a very small, close-in uh, area, mm -hmm. uh, each with its own specific habitat, 
with its own species. There's a lot of overlap yeah. of plants and animals, but, but each one has, has a species or two that, that's unique to, to that particular habitat. Yeah. Um, all, all together, that's what makes, makes Simsbury really special from, a, from an ecological standpoint. The Simsbury Land Trust is not the first to recognize this, and probably for 100 plus years, individuals have been donating or selling land to uh, the state, to the town, mm -hmm. or setting up uh, private foundations like the McLean uh, Game Refuge. Okay, yeah. uh, <clears throat> so when we came along, uh, we were created as another resource for the town to help protect the open space for future generations mm -hmm. so that the future generations could enjoy what we enjoy. Um, when the Simsbury Land Trust got organized and looked at the map, we set out as a goal to extend, expand, um, buffer, and connect mm -hmm. these lands that were already protected. Okay. And also to add um, sizable properties that included uh, a, a habitat which wasn't already protected. Okay. So that at the end of the day, we wanted a town that had um, not only a, an example of all of the major habitats preserved, mm -hmm. but also meaningful sized habitats so that they can actually support the, the animals and plants that, that, uh, that, they, that, they, uh, um, uh, that they're suited for. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what we have uh, after 35 years and adding, adding 1,000 acres, um, and, along, and while we were doing that, the town and the state were also adding, adding to, their, to their ownership. And what we have today is uh, a, a network of corridors mm -hmm. um, that, are, that are natural and undeveloped and will, will remain so forever. Uh, they're along the Trap Rock Ridges, okay. along the river. They're through the center of town where you have um, uh, Stratton Forest, uh, Stratton Pond State Park, uh, Town Forest, um, Onion, Onion Mountain. Mm -hmm. You have Ethel Walker School, you have Tall Meadow Farm. Uh, so you, you have a sizable amount of the, of the valley floor, uh, mostly forested, but, but a lot of fields in there mm -hmm. also. Yep. Um, and you also have um, in the northern part of town, uh, Great Pond State, State yep. Park, you have McLean, portions of McLean mm -hmm. uh, Game Refuge. You have our, the Land Trust's uh, Wegner property. You have the bog that the Land Trust owns. You have the Knapp, Knapp Wetlands. So you have, also have a cluster of uh, um, uh, valley wetlands mm -hmm. uh, here in the northern part of town. Not only uh, are the corridors important in protecting this diversity and um, enhancing it, but it's also a great opportunity for hiking trails because mm -hmm. uh, once, once you tie these properties together, you can have a, a, an interesting, uh, physically challenging walk right. uh, for, all every, you know, for all ages and all, mm -hmm. all uh, physical uh, uh, capacities. Um, so so that's, um, uh, we, we are um, continuing to, to expand uh, um, you know, find um, uh, areas where we can expand mm -hmm. um, individual properties. Um, there's a connection here or there that uh, can be improved upon that, we're, that we continue to do. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the one property that we're currently working on, the big, big project that we're mm -hmm. currently working on is Tanager Hill. And this is a good example, and I'll just real briefly comment that uh, that's this uh, kind of appendage, the green appendage that, yep. that, that uh, uh, is in this area. That's about 100 acres, uh, 120 acres. We we're, uh, have a purchase and sale agreement for 75 of these acres. We think the 75 best, best portion yep. uh, of the property. What is neat about it is that it is of a, lar a size and a location. If you notice, it, is, it stretches all the way from the river floodplain mm -hmm to the top of the Metacom uh, mountain. Yeah. So your 500 feet are encompassed within, within this individual property. We also have a stream that goes through it and cuts a, a magnificent, I don't know if you've been there, but it's a mm -hmm. magnificent um, 30 to 40 foot deep, very narrow ravine that's been cut through wow. a um, glacial moraine. 
So, th so that's pretty spectacular. It also has swamps, it has two vernal pools, and although it's mostly wooded, about 15% of it is a series of these delightful um, natural meadows that are sprinkled through the woods. So you're walking through the woods and all of a sudden it opens up into this, this meadow with no cars, no, um, no other people. It's, it's just, uh, just spectacular. Um, and uh, because it, it has all of these um, various elevations and different uh, habitats, uh, it's tremendously rich in, uh, in rare uh, or uncommon or endangered species. Mm -hmm. There's 17 species that are state listed of plants and animals that are, can be found in this, in this mm -hmm. general area. So it's, a, it's very key. It also, uh, the other neat, neat thing about it is that um, from a hiker's standpoint, mm -hmm. there are very few ways that you can cross the mountain easily. Mm, okay. I mean, you can uh, always, if you want to spend a, all day <laughs> <laughs> and scrape your knees, and um, you, you, you can find a number. But the only, only really practical um, way to do it on foot through the woods mm -hmm. and, and find a way to cross the river at the same spot, this is the only combination um, in the, in, not just in Simsbury, but in the, in the Farmington Valley. Farmington Valley. It's the only, the only way you can walk from downtown Bloomfield, and we're having a hike on the 8th of, uh, uh, it's a sat the Saturday, 7th or 8th of June, oh, um, okay. where we're doing it jointly with Bloomfield, and we're going to start at the Flower Bridge, Drake Hill, mm -hmm. and we're going to go up through the Tanager Hill property, up to the Pinnacle, down the other side, through uh, uh, Windbury Land Trust property on oh. Bloomfield side. There's two farms that they own mm -hmm. and, and other property all the way over to um, uh, Duncaster, uh, that, that area where okay. the, the old Cigna, yeah. um, Cigna complex is in that, that area. So, wow. so that'll be quite a hike. We did it last <laughs> fall, so, we've, so we, uh, we know it can be done and uh, it's been improved upon and, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to, hopefully it'll be a good, good day. I hope so. But um, with, with this trail um, and, and going across the bridge, you can go to the Fitzgerald's intersection, Yep. Pu push the button, cross Route 10, go down the sidewalk on West Street, down to the high school, cross the road at the high school, and you hop right on the, the old rail, railroad bed mm -hmm. that goes in a straight line down to Town Forest. You got Ethel Walker Woods right here. Mm -hmm. You got the Tell Meadow Trail right here. From the Tell Meadow Trail, you can get an ice cream cone. You go a little ways on 309 and go up through the um, West Ridge Trails. So it's a it's a it's the it's unique in that it's uh, most trails are north south yeah in the valley. This is one of the very few that's an east truly east uh, east, uh, uh, east yeah, west east trail. West trail. Right. Yeah. So um, well, that's that's a hike and a half though. Yeah. <laughs> so that so that's where we that's what we've that's what I see that we've come and I say we. The, the Simsbury Land Trust with its thousand acres and also the town and the state and, right. and McLean's and others. This is what we as a community have accomplished in the mm -hmm. 35 years. And, and this will, will be here forever. And the job now is to, you know, to take care of it. Right. And to um, make it accessible to the public and, and, and get promote it and get more people out uh, so they understand what's there and, and they come to enjoy it and value it. Well, well, I'm glad you didn't mention that thing about maintaining it because <laughs> I just don't. I, how many people does it take to maintain all this property? Because I mean, this is a combination of state-owned property. So the state does mm -hmm. does their thing with the state stuff, right. and the town does this thing with their town open space. And we pay people to do that. This land mm -hmm. trust, you got all this property, and you're going to need funding if you're hiring somebody yep. to do it. And tons of people, at least to me, it seems like tons of people <laughs> to maintain this. And dozens of volunteers. Dozens. Yeah, we have a really high quality stewardship committee run by Sally and Don Rieger, and we have dozens of volunteers. Plus, we do also hire some people to do specific work, like invasive work and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it requires tremendous volunteerism, and, and that's mm -hmm. one of the great things about our membership is that we have a lot of people who are interested in working hard on that. 
Okay. But it, it does take yeah. quite a bit. But it does, we've, we've spent um, on average over the last, what, five or six years, um, $20,000, I want to say, on uh, third party professionals. Okay. Um, you know, a large tree falls down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't want to volunteer out there with a chainsaw. <laughs> uh, yeah. it, it, um, taking take care of a problem like that, mm -hmm. um, our limbs, um, the invasive um, control—that's yeah. that is a is a um, very difficult but 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 extremely important project, and um, we we're making some great headway okay. on on our properties in that regard. We're never going to eradicate it. It's a it's a man. It's like mowing the lawn. You, you, it's a big project initially. But then, if you keep after it each year, it's a, it's right. it's manageable, and that's all you need to do. Because what invasive does is it crowds out all the native plants. Right. So all of a sudden, instead of having twenty or, or two thousand species within a given area, uh, you only have a half a dozen species because an invasive has come in and crowded out the the natives. Right. Um, and as long as we open up areas and keep them open. Mm -hmm. um, you'd be surprised how quickly the native plants come back in, and we've got good examples um, on our own Mortimer property, for instance, and mm -hmm. the Wagner Woods now that we're starting to work on, Case Properties, another good example where um, you see a before and after picture, um, it's like night and day, yep. uh, and they, it's, within a year the, the natives do start coming, coming back. But you got to keep after those invasives. Yeah, so I, I realized that I had mm -hmm. some invasive on my yeah. property, and I was like, Oh my goodness, because at first I thought, well, oh, this is a pretty rose bush, mm -hmm. but it was that. Yeah. And you've got 10 pretty rose bushes. <laughs> oh, and then, and then, well, the, but the thing is that the, you know, the, the vine on it is like this big, yeah. you know, so this last fall I went out there and just was like chopping away right. at it. And this spring I had to go rip it apart, but again, yeah. but yeah, it's, Every so year. the stewards now are, they, is that like a um, mentorship? type of a program where you've got stewards who know what they're doing and then new people yeah. come in and volunteer to become stewards? A lot stewards. of them start out as like property monitors. We have people who watch and, take and kind of keep an eye on all of our properties. Mm -hmm. And then as they get more time, they'll work in a work group with, with some of our more experienced trainers and even some professionals and get an idea of, of what it takes. There's a really some pretty technical work that needs to be done with some of these things, particularly like the invasives. And, and, then, and then we also have... Um, you know, they do a lot of uh, trail work too. Mm -hmm. We keep the, keep the trails clean. We've created a, quite a few uh, boardwalks and bridges on our properties for the wetlands and, uh, and science. And that's science too. Mm -hmm. um, we've made a big effort in the last year to uh, increase our signage and, and our trail marking to make it easier for everyone to get out there and, and get around on their own. Okay. And we have great maps on our website too. Yeah, I was going to yeah. ask because I tend to get lost doesn't matter where I go, I just kind of, you know, I like walking in the woods. My dog mm -hmm. takes me in the woods and all of a sudden she's off on this trail and I think it's a regular trail, but obviously <laughs> it's a deer trail yeah, or exactly. something. And, um, you know, and I'll wander around for an hour or two and then go, oh, well, I found a road. So. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. so you do have those maps out there? Yeah, we have, and you know, a lot of people know about our walk book, which we've had since even before I, I was on the land trust. And, um, we're in, right in the middle of doing a, a revision of the land trust now, but our walkbook is on our website okay. uh, at SimsburyLandTrust.org, and they uh, they can download a page just for a walk they're going to take, okay. and that'll that'll set you up with where to go and park, and uh, a pretty good route, and the trails are now really well marked. Okay. Um, so it generally works out really well, and you know sooner. Uh, probably in the next year, we'll have a new edition of the walkbook out, and that'll be available in hard copy. Great. That would be nice. I think yeah. I have a copy of the older walkbook. Yeah. yeah. I still managed to get lost. I don't know. <laughs> 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 so you mentioned that you are um, in the process of getting Tanager Hill, and I know that we have completed... I'll say the, we, because it's a community effort, yes, really. Yes. Um, the purchase of George Hall's farm. That's correct. Um, no. So that it will be an organic farm in perpetuity. No. Is, that, is that how you say that? Well, Forever. yes. Forever. <laughs> yes. We, we, um, the, the farm, you know, we have, um, we have purchased the um, a conservation easement, purchased mm -hmm. development rights on Rosedale, 
on Till Meadow yeah. and, and now on George Hall's farm, okay. uh, 50 acres that John, George Hall owns. Um, and we recognize that um, there, there are strong farmers that know what they're doing and have been doing it for years. Right. Um, and in each case, they, they have, there, there are younger people coming, coming along uh, that um, you know, will we'll be, we'll be hopefully taking over. Uh, but at some point, um, that's not going to happen, and um, uh, the property will be sold. Um, and be somebody new that that mm -hmm. buys it, or the owner might um, just get gets get sick, or for mm -hmm. for whatever reason can't right. can't keep actively farming it. Um, our our transactions have a requirement that uh, when that occurs, and it's going it's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. it maybe maybe five years, maybe fifty years from now, but at some point it, it's going to have a, a period of time when it's not going to be owned by a farmer, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, we require that when that happens, uh, that the fields be maintained, be cut mm -hmm. at least once a year, so that you don't get the brush right. um, established. So that you're basically stockpiling the agricultural field for the next farmer that, yep. that comes along. Yep. And that's what that's what we do. That's when we say we're preserving it in As perpetuity. It. We're 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 we have tried to think through all all the different things that can ha can go wrong, yeah. and uh, and uh, how do you ameliorate that or 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 uh, make sure that it's just a temporary situation? Right. And I think you know we think we've we've uh, we've gone to school. A lot of people have done it um, all over the country, and and we've tried to go to school on mistakes that others have made. Mm. So. Um, now I read, I believe, on the website that you're going to be working on Wagner's Woods this summer, cleaning that mm -hmm. up and getting it um, yes. free of its invasives. Yeah, that's that's our one of our current big projects. And if if you've been out there, it's a great trail to walk. But you know, in the winter it seems pretty open. But it, at this time of year, the barberries particularly are, are heavily grown up, and, mm -hmm. and you really can't go five feet off of the trail. Oh. And you know, not only do they are they invasive, like Dick mentioned, and crowding out the, the current, the uh, natural plants, but you know, it increases your tick population, which is the bane mm -hmm. of all hikers. And uh, you know, it's unsightly as well. So that's, that's our current big program. We've been, you know, in the past able to get some good grants, some they call them WIP grants for invasive work. But you know, down the road, we're, one of our things that we know we're gonna have to do is, is raise money on our stewardship endowment for that kind of work. All right. Well, um, we only have five minutes, so we're going to go into some of the projects that you guys are doing as far as educating the future generations about stewardship and things like that. So exactly what, what is the plan and what process are you in for as establishing those uh, well, Within our Recreation Education Committee, we have uh, right now a uh, program that's been out for two years called the Dirty Boots Kids Club. Mm -hmm. And it's a program to get children out into nature. And as we all have heard, there, there's a lot of scientific evidence how important that is. Right. And so we have a program, and in, in this past year the theme was the farms. So we had a group of, of kids and, and some of our, our hardworking people uh, running the program and we would get them out. We went to all the, the farms in town mm -hmm. and you know one farm there they're getting raw milk and they're making ch making uh, uh, butter out of it and, yep. and tasting their butter. They're grinding corn. They're uh, you know seeing about bugs and, and how the crops are handled and, and kept clean of, of pests and that kind of thing. And there a lot of stuff where they get their hands on things because when they get their hands dirty um, they really get involved in, you know, not only are we, we uh, giving them a good time or involving their parents as well mm -hmm. and hoping that the kids, as they grow, become the next generation right. that, that helps to look out for things in town, too. Okay. So there's the Dirty Kids Boot... Dirty, dirty, dirty Boots Kids dirty Club. Dirty Boots Kids Club. Then that happens in the fall, in the that, summer? Yeah, most of, most of our programs run through, from fall through spring. In the summer, it's hard to get people together, so we tend to just encourage people to get out on the trails on their own in the summer. Okay. But starting this fall, the, the Kids Club will be going full swing. We've got a great film series called The uh, Green, Scenes. Green Scenes, which uh, we do in the library. Mm -hmm. That's free of charge, um, really well received. 
and we have hikes in, in other educational programs mm -hmm. multiple times each yeah. month. We have a series of speakers, um, ex experts in a wide range of, of um, natural history type, type okay. of subjects, geology. And so so how would people find out about these? Uh, on, on our website, simsburylandtrust.org. We're on Facebook as well. Um, we're working on the, on the website, but you can go back archives. We've got maps and everything on there. And, and you can also join our, our email news list, which is really great. Uh, by contacting our office, and then you'll get news blasts about all of our programs that are going and on. And reminders. Okay. If, you've, if you've signed up for something, you get a reminder a few days ahead of time okay. saying, don't forget. Okay. So to <coughs> sign up for the newsletter, is that a phone call, or is that something they can do through the website? Um, both, I believe, both, but I the think, phone call is yeah. probably quickest. Yeah. What's the phone number? <laughs> oh. oh, okay. <laughs> we'll get you that information. Oh, you got it right here. Oh, oh. It's right here. Okay. It's, uh, where is it? Well, all right. Well, well, we'll get that information. We'll put it up on the. Uh, I'm bad with numbers. That's okay. <laughs> but um, if anybody wants to go to the, the Sims Ray Land Trust, just, just spell out S I M S B U R Y L A N D T R U S T dot org, right? Okay. And Facebook, if you go out to Facebook and probably do a search on Sims Ray Land Trust, mm -hmm. it will come up, and you right. can just like them there, and it'll yep, connect you to everything. Too. And probably the phone number's out there. On I, I'm the, sure. On the web. I'm sure that's on the website. I, <laughs> I know it. I know it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> anything real quick that they need to know? We've got the land trust yeah. information. Well, yeah. Thank you very much for having us on, Althea. And we'd like to thank our membership. Our we have great broad-based support in town, and none of this would have been possible without everybody in town. Okay. Yes. Well, mm. great. Well, I want to thank you, Fred Feibel, and Dick Davis for joining us today. It's well, been thank you. wonderful. It's been educational. And you love the land and nature, and it shows. And uh, thank you for keeping us current on the events that are coming up for the Sims Ray Land Trust. If you are interested in learning more about Tanager Hill, SCTV will be airing a program that Sam Feibel produced titled Tanager Hill. The program is also available at www.simsburylandtrust.org and on simsburytv.org. I'd also like to thank our volunteer camera operator, Joe Barglowski, and our director, Karen Hanville, and the staff of Simsbury Community Television for helping make the Simsbury View possible. I'm Althea Graney. Thank you for watching Simsbury View and supporting SCTV. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.